It's no secret that pro Rocket League players are really good at the game, and for the majority of the player base, there is a lot to learn from these pro players. One of the easiest things to learn from is their decision making. So in today's video, we'll be breaking down the decision making of pro Rocket League players so we can improve our own decision making in our own games. So for these examples here today, we're going to be taking a look at the Team BDS player Exotic. And the reason why I've chosen Exotic for these decision-making examples is because I feel like Exotic is one of the smartest players in the game, and I feel like he's still not talked about enough in regards especially to the brain side of things. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at Exotic's defensive decision-making. So as this play starts, Exotic's going to get a free ball here in the midfield. Gonna go up and take a shot here, bit of a weak shot, just a giveaway over to Vatira. But now here's where we're gonna start seeing some great decision making from Exotic. So he lands pretty quickly, sees Vatira play the ball over. Now immediately, we know that we are first man up on this play. And how do we know that? Because as we moved upfield here for this touch, we can see both of our teammates rotating back downfield. So with that in mind, as we go for this touch, we know that we're not going to have any teammate support in terms of keeping this ball in the offensive half, but we also know that we do have two defenders back behind us. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that KC does not have a free transition out of the defensive half. So even though we find ourselves a bit low boost here, we are still going to go pressure this ball on the sidewall, simply to make sure that Vatira cannot take time here and cannot take the ball under control. So good pressure here from Exotic to make sure Vatira doesn't have space. Gets him to give away possession. Monkey Moon goes up, gets a light touch. Exotic just rotating back here, gonna hang out patiently. And now here's where we're gonna see another very important moment of decision making. So Exotic here is sitting back in net with pretty low boost. We can see our teammate Drawley has quite a bit more to work with and is significantly closer to the ball and probably has a bit of an easier time going for this challenge than we would with our minimal boost. So knowing that, Exotic's just gonna sit patiently here along the back wall, let Drawley come in for this challenge, and then he's able to play off the results of it. We're just gonna keep this pressure on by allowing our teammate to challenge first, while we wait patiently behind. So we can see here, just waiting patiently, Drawley takes the challenge. Now at this exact moment, we have Rise coming forward, and this is gonna be very good patience here from Exotic on this back wall. Because a lot of players might have a bad habit of trying to jump out for this really early, therefore allowing an easier time for the offensive player to get past them. At the end of the day, in this position, the goal is to defend the net. So as long as you keep your car between the ball and the goal, you really don't have anything to worry about. Additionally, in this situation, we can also see when Ryze gets control of this ball, that he's going pretty laterally across the field and isn't really working his way toward the net. So we can be a bit more patient, a bit more calm with when we decide to challenge, and just make sure we put in that challenge when it's advantageous for us. So what we'll see here is Exotic just gives it a little bit on the backboard, just lets Rise come forward just a bit, and then once we pretty much have our defense set up where we like it, Exotic's gonna go ahead, push out, get this initial challenge again, and then right here we're gonna see another very good element of Exotic's decision making that again a lot of players don't really do, and it's this idea that yes we're low boost, but we can currently see that we have one player challenging the ball here, one player backwards in net. So at this current moment, the only open spot on the field is a drop down pass into this midfield, which as long as we're sitting here is completely covered and is not dangerous. A lot of players in this situation, especially on zero boost, might immediately rotate out to look for pads, but in doing so, you open up this passing option into this area, and you leave your teammate in a very awkward spot in net, leaving him to try to cover any shot that results from a pass into the midfield. So very smart from Exotic here to pretty much make himself almost like an offensive player, and in this situation, if the ball does fall to him, he's just gonna trust himself to be able to shoot really badly and send the ball off to the corner. So you can see he's just kind of hanging out here waiting to see where the ball drops down. As soon as he recognizes that it's a ball that Drawley can play, he goes ahead and gets himself out of the way, allows Drawley to come forward, and now we can secure boost and make sure we have plenty to play with. Now Drawley's touch was quite loose, so you can see that Exotic hasn't rushed forward anywhere, hasn't 
thrown himself into an awkward spot, he has stayed patient on the back line, and now that he sees Ato have control, instead of jumping out off the wall early, he's gonna keep his wheels on the ground as long as he can, and in this case, he's gonna give himself an even better chance to make this challenge by going up towards the ceiling, where he gives himself as much leeway and where he can challenge the ball as possible. You can see on the ceiling, we just play from where the ball is gonna go, get in front of it, and that is the end of that offensive press from KC. So you can see throughout that entire play, Exotic really is just making sure he applies pressure to the ball, and he's making sure that he covers areas of the field that are not covered by his other teammates. By doing that, you pretty much have an unbreakable defense, because if you have every area of the field covered, there's no place that the opponents can go with the ball that you won't be able to cut it off. So just a little bit forward here from that defensive example, we're going to see a nice offensive example. So Charlie's going to go ahead and get control here. Again, Exotic's going to be patient, just waiting to see what happens. Matira gets this touch over to the side, and what we're going to see here is this jump from Exotic just to the sidewall. And what this does is it's not really an attempt to get a touch on the ball. Rather, it's an attempt to make sure that Casey, again, doesn't take control. So with this... We are using a little bit of boost and we're giving the jump audio to make these guys think that there's someone coming for this ball. Therefore, they're not even going to think about trying to control it. They're just going to get it out of here because they may think that a challenge is coming. So Exotic's going to jump up here again, just forcing and pressuring Rise into making this touch. Totally fine. And now as we rotate back, you're going to see he's going to tilt his camera down so we can see exactly where his teammate is so he knows what's going to happen next. Because with this view... We can see, okay, Monkey Moon's going to bring this ball back in, so we're going to make sure that we avoid him as we rotate out, and then we can swing back around. We don't have to worry about playing this ball right here, because Monkey Moon's going to have it covered. So we swing around, this is fine, Monkey Moon gets the touch. Again, we're just waiting patiently in the back, and now this is a play where, again, patience is key, because you got four players in the air, you have no idea where the ball's going to go, so Exotic's just going to sit patiently, you can see, he's literally not turning his car at all. This is very important, and a thing a lot of players struggle with, you can see that he is maintaining this neutral position. Because when a challenge this strange is happening, this ball can literally go anywhere. But from this neutral position, Exotic can go any which way he needs to, regardless of what happens with this challenge. So it's very important to learn to maintain this neutral position, so that you can attack the ball quickly wherever it may go. So in this case, we maintain this neutral position, the ball goes over to the left. Okay, we'll go ahead and play that way. Now this is where awareness of our opponents is very important. So right here we can see a toe is flying out of the play behind us. We have Rise going back towards the net, and we have Vatira just floating in the air. So what that tells us is we have time here, especially considering the fact that our teammates are not in the best position. We don't want to rush any kind of touch here that would result in any kind of bounce off the backboard because that just gives a very easy counterattack to our opponents. So instead, Exotic is going to take his time, recognize that he has space, and we're going to see right at this moment that Ato actually does jump back into the play, but Exotic is honestly totally fine with this, because from this position, even if a toe does get a touch, all that's going to do is send the ball back over this way, which Exotic can again just turn for and keep this pressure on. In this case, a toe is just going to go flying by the ball, presumably expecting Exotic to do something with it, and now again we're going to take a look at where the rest of the defenders are, Vatira again facing backwards towards the net, and Rise all the way back on the goal line facing out. So now Exotic is going to do something very smart here where he controls the ball with a single touch. Now what this does is it's going to bait the defense into moving forward because when a player has control of the ball, the last thing you want to do is give them space to set up that flick. So he's going to bait Rise into moving forward here because Vatira at this point is pretty much out of the play. He's kind of going sideways wherever he's going. But he's baiting Rise forward here. And as soon as Rise moves off the goal line, Exotic immediately hits him with the flick. And it's right over the top because Rise has given himself less time to react to the play because he was sucked in by the control touch from Exotic. So very good use of control into a powerful touch there from Exotic to bait the defense in so he can open up an opportunity for himself. 
But again, that was all based on the awareness of the other players, making sure that we didn't put ourselves out of position, maintain a neutral spot on the field until there was a reason for us to go elsewhere, and then we utilized the space that the defense gave us in order to set ourselves up for a fantastic scoring opportunity. Now the last example we're going to look at here in terms of decision making is going to be decision making on low boost. For a lot of players, when they're anywhere between 0 and like 25 boost, they feel extremely awkward and feel like they can't do anything to impact the play, but what we're going to see from Exotic here is a picture perfect example of what you should do when you are on low boost so that you can still be impactful for your team. So right here, Exotic's going to be air dribbling, going to get a 50-50 with a toe, and he's going to land and immediately go down to basically zero boost. Now, the situation we're in here is this ball is obviously bouncing into our opponent's half. We have one opponent here who we have to worry about, and there's also this mid boost here. Now, a lot of players in this position would just immediately say, you know what? Not much I can really do with it since I'm on such low boost, so let me go ahead and collect these resources and then move forward after that and apply the pressure. But Exotic instead is going to make use of the fact that Batira here has no idea how much boost he has. For all Batira knows, Exotic still has like 20 to 30 boost, which would be plenty for Exotic to make a play on this ball. So because in this situation, Exotic is going to just keep moving forward, he's actually going to force Batira to think that he's able to make a play. And because of that, Batira is going to be a lot more patient on this ball. And rather than diving in, he's actually going to turn back towards the net. Which Exotic can now utilize this information to play this a bit slower and just go up for a 50-50 all the while, making the KC defense extremely awkward. All of this simply because he didn't go slightly out of his way to get that big boost and just stayed on the ball. So here we're going to go ahead and get that challenge. Almost works out. We lose the corner boost, so now a lot of players might be in absolute panic mode at this point. But Exotic, on the other hand, just going to be totally calm about it. We're going to rotate out. And you can see, even on zero boost, he's not going all the way back. He's immediately turning upfield. He's recognizing that there's probably going to be a loose touch coming out from KC, and he wants to leave himself in a spot to capitalize on it. Because if he were to go all the way back, he would open up this massive gap on the field that would allow even a loose touch from KC to result in a clear out of their defensive half. So instead, Exotic's going to maintain this midfield presence to apply this pressure. Ball gets pushed down the field from a toe, but again, Exotic not exactly worried about it. He's in a fine defensive position. Matera not really in a spot to be able to capitalize on that clear. So Exotic and Emilio just rotate back and get the clear out. Again, we're getting beat to that corner boost by Vatira. So we're again low. And now we're going to turn back. We have 13 boosts now to work with. Still a very low amount. But again, we're recognizing, hey, we're still in a spot where we can play the ball. And now it's all about being smart with where we play it. So a lot of players in these positions would feel like they absolutely need to desperately clear this ball out downfield so they'll try to line themselves up and just hit this thing as far downfield as they possibly can the problem with that is that you have one opponent sitting here in the midfield waiting for a weak clear to come out and you have another opponent who's probably going to be challenging you because you know he just got this boost so you're gonna have Vatira jumping at this so the important thing is that you don't want to be playing this ball towards where you're being challenged or where another opponent player can take over. So instead, Exotic is going to be smart, and he's going to recognize where on the field the open space is, so that he can give his team a chance to break out of defense. So in this situation, if we can't play the ball this way, and we can't play the ball this way because there's opponents there, we're going to look to simply play the ball into safety to our back corner, and give ourselves space to be able to get the clear out which is exactly what Exotic's going to do. Going to recognize where the opponents are coming from. Let's go ahead and play this ball to safety. We can see Drawley's just picked up the full boost in the corner. And now, even though we got demoed, Drawley is able to get the clear out. And just like that, we have completely destroyed the KC offensive pressure, simply by making sure that we didn't abandon the play, even though we were on zero boost. And we were aware of the best place to play the ball to allow our team to get the most out of it. 
So that should give you guys a pretty good idea into what goes into the decision making of pro Rocket League players. A lot of stuff that we talked about here today can easily be applied to your own games, and if you do apply this knowledge, it should help to make your life a lot easier. Of course, thank you guys so much for watching, I really do appreciate each and every one of you who made it to this point in the video, and I do hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below, so you make sure you don't miss any future Rocket League content. Additionally, if you'd like to be a bit more involved in the community we're building here, feel free to join my Discord, which I'll have linked down in the description. And as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. See you later, guys.